Kerry here from Homestead How, and in today's episode, I'm gonna tell you why this is better than money in the bank. And this, 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 this is better than money in the bank. This, this, and several other things, especially in the world we're living in right now. Let's get started. This, you got it? Yeah. So in today's episode, Jen and I are going to talk about, oh, as Jen falls, things that are better than money in the bank. As we showed you in the little intro there, we'll go through a couple things with inflation going through the roof and just, not even that, just the fact that we're so reliant on going to the grocery store. And as we saw in 2020, what, ha what happens if you go to the grocery store and those shelves are empty? We should all be prepared, especially all of us, since we've all gone through 2020. And we've seen the empty shelves before. So I'm not suggesting you go out and stockpile things, but there are precautions that you can take to avoid something like that happening and having good peace of mind and that are just good investments. This and this is more valuable than money in the bank because it can produce eggs for you over and over again, obviously. And not only that, chickens are great because if I had $100 and it was just sitting in the bank, or I had $100 and I bought $100 worth of chickens, I'm gonna get these eggs for years to come. Not only that, the chickens go around our property when the snow clears and they eat all of the ticks and insects and mosquitoes. They're really hard workers, they're entertaining, and these eggs, these are better than the eggs you're gonna get from the grocery store because they're delicious they're healthier, they're full of more protein and nutrients than eggs you were gonna get from the store. And not only that, these chickens are cared for very well. When you go to the store and you get a dozen eggs for 80 cents from Aldi's or wherever, God knows what they did to those chickens. They were probably in a little shoebox sized thing their entire life, dumped out a couple eggs and that was the end of them. Our chickens have a good life here. They eat the insects, they eat the bugs. So I would much rather have $100 worth of chickens than $100 sitting in the bank. This is our solar powered trailer. I built this several years ago on our homestead. There's two solar panels, some batteries, a power inverter, and this is an old trailer that Jen and I bought from a farm auction. She painted it green, she put some cool stickers on it. This has been powering our dog kennel, Evergreen Dog Retreat, and it's been powering it now for over three years. We have no electricity going here. We've had no electric bill, therefore, these solar panels are worth more than money in the bank. If I could buy $100 worth of solar panels or have $100 sitting in the bank, much rather have the solar panels. And in an off-grid situation or if things were to collapse, we could put this up to the house and it would power our lights and fans and whatever we needed to do. Like I said, it powers this whole dog kennel. There's a ceiling fan, there's three lights in there. We have a radio going for the dogs when they're in here. And this entire thing has powered this building for three years now. No electric bill whatsoever. This is our IVC tote. Rainwater comes down from the roof. It goes in here. This thing is full of water right now. We had a bunch of snow and it's been starting to melt. And all day it's been filling up. This was empty yesterday. I had the thing open, but why not collect some water? This is better than money in the bank. Why? Because in a grid down situation, if you have $100 and your grid is down and you can't get water out of your well or you can't go to the store and buy water, I would much rather have one of these. What do we pay for these IBC totes, Jen? I think it was like 25 bucks. 25 bucks a piece and we bought four of them. I have one here, I have one there. There's one over there, point it, point it over there, Jen. Point it over there, okay. That's for our, our other garden. And um, we have another one behind the house by our woodshed. Those are IBC totes. We can fill them up with rainwater. That one I have a hose attachment on. We run the hose down to the garden. The water fills up in there and then we use it to water the garden. In a grid down situation or some sort of emergency, we have an electric well here, like most people do. If that electric well goes out, we're gonna have some problems, but we have this as a backup. And we can run this through our big Berkey water filter. We can boil the water and then run it through the big Berkey water filter. So I would much rather have something like this than $100 in the bank. And in fact, this one was $100. We got four of them for 25 bucks each. This is better than money in the bank because this will heat our entire house, most of it, not quite the back rooms back there, but in a grid down situation with some firewood, this will keep us warm. And literally, if we didn't have this and the propane went out, we would just freeze to death. Plus, we just love having it because it creates a nice type of heat. You get different heat off of wood than you do off of propane or natural gas. It heats you in your bones. It's warm, it's cozy, you can cook on here, and we're actually upgrading this. We're getting a wood 
cook stove. I'll show a picture of that on the screen. We're being serious. We're taking all this very seriously right now. It's a Pioneer Princess. It's going to take up most of this room here. It's got a big firebox. This one will go three hours. Our new one will go 12 hours, 11 or 12 hours. It's got a water tank on it, seven gallon water tank. Um, we want to go completely off grid. We're not going to get rid of this. We're going to move it to a different spot. You'll have to stay tuned to our channel to see that, but this is definitely worth more than money in the bank. This is long-term food storage. And Jen and I are going to show you real quick in this episode how we did this. Just takes a minute. This is flour and it's in a Mylar bag. And this will last years. We've taken all the oxygen out. We have an oxygen absorber in here and in the bag. I would much rather have this than money in the bank. In a grid down situation, there's flour, you can do rice, sugar, and you can store it long term in here. So if the grocery stores ever have empty shelves or you can't rely on a third party for one reason or another, whatever that may be, having some of this on hand is going to be a godsend. You can cook a million different things. If you watch our channel, you'll know that. Pizza dough, homemade bread, English muffins, hot dog buns, hamburger buns, bread, egg noodles. All right, so the first thing I mentioned, this is better than money in the bank. I highly suggest you go out and do this. Anybody can do it. So this long-term food storage, right, this is a couple steps and you have to buy some Mylar bags and some oxygen absorbers. Some people don't want to go through the trouble of doing that. I highly suggest you do because if stuff hits the fan and you don't have any food, you're going to think back to this video and wish you did it. But if you don't, Everyone goes to the grocery store. This was what, Jen? 50 cents? 52 cents, I believe. 52 cents, 55 cents at Aldi. We'll show you. We just went there and we brought our camera with. This can of food, it says best used by 2024. So two years from now. That's best used by. That's not expiration date. This will last you 20 years. They get all of the air out of here. As long as it's not dented or bulging, you can open this up in 20 years from now and eat it. Every one of you out there watching this that wants to be more prepared, you don't have to go stockpile. You go grocery shopping once a week if you're a typical family. When you go grocery shopping, get some canned vegetables. You're going to eat them anyways. So our family likes corn and beans. We'll go out and we'll buy a flat of corn. And then next week we'll buy a flat of beans. And then next week we'll buy a flat of peas. And we'll take those home, we'll put them in the back of the pantry, we'll rotate them so the new stuff is in the back, the old stuff is in the front, and we'll eat it. And throughout the year, the year we'll eat it, we'll have um, a whole bunch of containers of it sitting there for if there's ever an emergency, but it's not gonna get wasted, we're gonna eat it anyways. I would rather have 100 cans of these carrots, I don't even like these carrots, I like the corn better, but I'd rather have 100 cans of these carrots sitting here than money in the bank because these cans at 55 cents a piece, even if nothing goes wrong with the economy, there's always inflation. What is it, 4% a year? I think over the last year it was 7 or 8%. The price of food is always going to go up. So if you can buy this at 55 cents right now, that's a better investment in some cases than taking $100 and putting it in the stock market. This food is only going to go up in price. If you have $100 sitting in the bank, Six months from now, six years from now, that $100 may be worth only $50 or $60. This can of food is only going to go up in price. So this is way better than having money in the bank. And I strongly encourage you, next time you go grocery shopping, buy some extra. Every week, buy some extra. Put it into your rotation. You're not going to waste it. You're still going to use it. Eventually eat it and go through it. And if this thing was 10 years old, I'd still eat it. So that's my biggest tip for you. Buy canned vegetables and canned food. One way that Jen and I have done over the years is long-term food storage. And we're not stockpiling things, we're just using items that we would use otherwise. One of those big items is flour. We also use a lot of rice. And what we'll do is, I'll show you real quick, this is super easy to do and anyone can do this. What you do is you go on Amazon, we'll leave a link in the description below. We bought a big bulk lot of these a couple of years ago and we still have a ton of them. You gotta get the right ones though, so be sure to check the link in the description. You get a five gallon bucket like this, they say get food grade buckets, but you're putting all of the food in the Mylar. And then you want to get these oxygen absorbers. These are a couple years old, but they're sealed in here. And that's all you need. So you take your Mylar bag and Jen and I did this with rice at our old house. That was eight years ago. And my daughter Katie and I not too long ago went and we pulled some of that rice out that we had in a bucket just like this and we ate it. Perfectly fine. You couldn't even taste the difference. You get all the oxygen out, your food can last years in here. Now, of course, it'll depend on if it's flour or rice or beans or what you're putting in there. But the biggest thing you got to do is make sure to get it airtight. We're going to put flour in here. We got this flour from Aldi's. It was $1.50. 
A couple months ago, it was $1.15. A couple months from now, it's probably going to be $3. A year from now, this could be $10. Again, this is money in the bank. Now, you can buy these from Costco, too. It's almost exactly the same price. We were just at Costco three days ago, and I took a little screenshot, so I'll show you. But if you calculate the cost out, it's almost exactly the same price if you get a big bag, 50-pound bag from Costco versus these smaller bags. So I'll probably do a time lapse right here. I'm going to do this real quick. I did a video on this very channel talking about what are you going to do if a pandemic comes to the United States. That was months before there were even murmurs of it here in the U.S. And I got so many comments on that. Uh, one guy left me a comment saying I'm a complete moron saying what you're 40 years old in your 40 years on life how often does something horrible happen where you need to prep food like that and I, I said to him well unimaginable things happen all the time I never would have imagined 9-11 would have happened and I never would have imagined what happened in 2020 and four months after he left me that comment 2020 happened and we went into a global lockdown as you are all aware and I left him a comment back I should show that on the screen because it's pretty funny I said well it didn't take too long for my little prediction to come true my point is, probably nothing's going to happen, but why not be prepared? This, this flour, we're going to use this flour no matter what. So we're just going to have more on hand and then we'll just rotate through it. Get right up with that. All right, so you get your flour in there. Get all your air out of it. And then you take one of these. These are just little oxygen absorber packets. You've seen these probably if you buy some new shoes or something, throw these in there. So we put two of these in. And then it's best if you flatten it and then stick the hose in on the side and get all the air out because you don't want to suck all that flour out. Quick update if you're following along on our channel. Thank you. Homestead How Pioneer Cabin Build. We are kicking this thing off soon. I just had a phone call with my good friend uh, who's on the Amish logging crew, our neighbor, our buddy. We went to have dinner with them before. We've been talking about them a lot. They're just the coolest people. I stopped by his house the other day and I dropped this book off. See if you can see that in focus. Not this book, but a copy of this book. I bought two of these, one for myself and one for my buddy. How to build and furnish a log cabin from scratch. He's Amish, he reads all the time. The kid's a genius, he's so smart. So I figured he'd enjoy that book. But he just called me early this morning and I talked to him and his boss on his crew. And on Tuesday, I'm picking him up, bringing him over here to the woods and we're gonna walk around and he's gonna give me um, a proposal, an estimate for what it's going to cost to have his crew come out with the horses and take down some logs and thin out some logs because it's getting so thick back there so that we can build our pioneer log cabin. Look, you just iron it. This is the first time I've ever used an iron, right Jen? Pretty much. Get a little board or something underneath it so you're nice and flat. So yeah, we got we got it all started and then we just have a little gap there. Oh yeah. And that's it. So it's 2022. We'll write that on here, flower 2022. This is the harder way, if you can call that hard, that was actually really simple. But you do have to get the mylar and the other things. The really simple way is this. And Jen and I are going to show you real quick what to look for and what to do. If a couple months from now you're going to the grocery store and there's no groceries and you have to feed your family, you're going to think back to this video and wish you listened to this moron right here. So let's get going. So come along with us on a quick trip over to Aldi's. We're going to show you some frugal tips and some ideas so that you can be prepared and your family can be prepared. tips for you while Jen and I head to the store to show you how to prepare. Number one, check out Clark Howard. Let's see if that focuses for me there. Clark Howard podcast. He tells you how to save money and avoid getting ripped off. Great, great podcast. Really cool guy. I've been listening to him on the radio for years and now he's got a really good podcast. So when you're at Aldi, obviously you want to look for things that are on sale, but also vegetables or items that you're going to eat. 
We don't buy things simply because they're cheap. We buy them because they're cheap and we will end up rotating through them. The other thing to look at if you want to be extremely frugal is how many calories do you get per dollar? And you can run the calculation. You can look at the servings on the food and you can see what food is going to give you the most calorie for the dollar. And if that's a food that your family's going to eat, that's one to go with. In our case, peas and green beans are some of the highest calorie per dollar based on the prices at our Aldi's currently. So that's something to look for as well. But of course, make sure you're going to purchase something that your family will rotate through. Every time we go shopping, we like to pick up maybe a flat or two flats and put it into our pantry rotation. Please leave a comment down below. What are some things that you have on your homestead or your home that are better than money in the bank? Please leave a comment down below and please share this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Please find some of our favorite photos we took on and around our homestead this week.